Every soldier has a time in their career where they are asked to push themselves to their physical and mental limit. Today, these soldiers are competing in the 1st Battalion, 21st Infantry Regiment's Gimlet Challenge. Lieutenant Guo, the officer in charge of the event, explains the importance of this challenge. We call this the Gimlet Challenge. It's a time-honored tradition where uh, these young soldiers that arrive new to the unit, they get to test their medal as number one as infantrymen, number two as soldiers, and number three to build a esprit de corps, not only as teams, in which is the size they're operating in right now, but also as a battalion. The Gimlet Challenge brings together newly arrived soldiers to the unit and puts them up against infantry-oriented tasks and objectives while ruck marching a total of 12 miles around Schofield Barracks. We will be following team number 28, which includes Sergeant First Class Emmanuel Nieves, Specialist Cody Stanberry, Specialist Joshua Herrera, and Private Justin Young. Beginning 28th and nearly 20 minutes behind the first team, they must make up time and try to catch up to the teams that started before them. Even though this challenge is not a competition, each soldier pushes themselves to their very limits to try and prove how physically and mentally strong they are. Team 28, led by Sergeant First Class Nieves, starts off strong with a mindset performing above their peers. Quickly gaining on each team, they continue the first four and a half mile hike to push onto the objective ahead. Arriving at the first objective, they are briefed on their challenge. The team must treat an injured soldier portrayed by specialist Justin Fireshaker, who has been shot in the arm while also preventing any other injuries such as shock. They apply an Israeli trauma bandage along with a combat application tourniquet to stop the bleeding. Good. So what we did, we checked his body. Well, we put pressure on the on the injury, stop the bleeding. And uh, we had our other two guys check his body for anything else. And then uh, one of my other guys put a Israeli bandage on it. It's good to go. Passing 23 teams before the second objective, they are making excellent time. The next mission is to complete a Preventative Maintenance Checks and Services, or PMCS, of a striker vehicle. The team goes through a checklist to make sure that each part of the vehicle is serviceable and mission ready. Once finished, the team once again don their gear and move out to the next objective. Arriving at Objective 3, the team receives a brief on the task. Each member has a separate task. They have to land a grenade in a certain area or object. Specialist Stanberry has to land the grenade within a 5 meter radius around the target from a distance of 35 meters. Private Young has to bound to a mock bunker, toss in a grenade, and move out to cover. Failing to identify the five types of grenades, the team had to complete 10 burpees before they move out to their next task. It's a little tired, but drop it off. <laughs> The next station included a shift from Gnome Point as part of a call for fire along with an RT-1523 radio assembly in check. After running into assembly problems, Private Young successfully assembles the pieces together and they complete the radio check. After another two mile hike, the team arrives at the pool, still pushing hard and staying motivated. Keeping strong, Sergeant First Class Nieves tries to keep the soldiers motivated while pushing them to complete the task. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 
Let's go hurry up. It's way at the bottom. That's alright. Just pull it up. Using only the equipment on their backs, the team starts to construct a raft so their gear can safely travel across the water. After completing the raft, they place it inside the pool. Already tired, they strive to push the gear to the opposite side. Successful, the soldiers move to the aid station where the medics spot a small blister on the heel of Specialist Herrera's foot. With the wound patched up with moleskin, their bodies pumping with adrenaline, the team continues on to the sixth mission. I'm feeling pretty good, especially after the Gatorade right there. They keep a quick pace as they continue to make good time on the teams in front of them. As they arrive, the soldiers begin their mission, which is to complete the confidence obstacle course. After climbing the first obstacle course, the team swiftly continues on to the rest of the course, which includes climbing the net wall, rope climb, and bounding between wooden beams. Finishing the mission, the team rushes back to the starting point to grab their gear and move out. Arriving at Duck Hill, the team finds out that part of the scenario involves Sergeant First Class Nieves having an amputated leg. The team will have to carry him to the next objective a few hundred meters away. Already tired and fatigued, the team switches off between weapons, gear, and the wounded sergeant. Come on. Right, hey, we're gonna have to switch. Keep going. It is a test of their endurance, however, the team reaches the objective, a landing zone, where they have to give a nine-line medical evacuation and ensure site security. Completing the nine-line, the team pushes to the Gimlet History Station, where they answer questions about the unit. Cedar Mountain, one, Gettysburg, two, and Cedar Mountain. No, we said that. Yep. Cedar Mountain, Gettysburg. Or no, you, you go both those. Petersburg, three. Good. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the team doesn't answer all the questions correctly and have to pay with log sit-ups before they can carry on to the last objective of the day, which is the 240 Bravo Machine Gun Assembly and Functions Check Station. Private Young completes the task with ease and they move out. Come on, team 28! The team pushes as hard as they can while jogging towards the finish line. After a long awaited day, team number 28 completes the Gimlet Challenge in an official time of 4 hours and 49 minutes. Alright, so we just finished the Gimlet Challenge here. Uh, I'll probably second up a two. I think it was about roughly 12, to, uh, between 12 and 13 miles. Uh, probably got one of the fastest times in the time. We started out team 28 and came in third place. Uh, had a good time. I don't want to do it again though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The soldiers we followed placed third, passing 25 different teams that left prior to them, which shows the amount of strength and dedication that our soldiers possess today. The Gimlet Challenge not only tests the soldiers' skills and physical abilities, but instills a sense of belonging and membership within the battalion. After all of the teams have completed the challenge, a ceremony is held to recognize each soldier as a Gimlet. They receive a certificate, their Gimlet stick, and a tradition drink known as Grog. After the competition of the Gimlet Challenge and receiving the prized Gimlet stick, the soldiers are now members of the Royal Gimlet Clan an honor that is always earned and never given. <laughs>